not sure I'll ever get to introduce American in my life, so I'm just going to take a second. Um, uh, because I got to tell you, uh, I actually am a, a big fan of our mayor and proud uh, to be able to call him our mayor. I think he represents what we try to do with our students, what we try to foster in the students when they leave, to have courage, to have creativity, um, and to have resilience and dedication. And in the six years that he's been the mayor of Philadelphia, um, really, I look around the country and uh, we feel, I feel we're blessed to uh, have um, Mayor Nigel, Michael Nutter as our mayor of Philadelphia. Uh, mayor Nutter, thank you for coming. So, David, thank you. Uh, very, very kind uh, comments. I greatly appreciate it. And Tim, our principal at uh, Med East, and uh, Tiffany, uh, co principals at uh, El Centro. Two students uh, that I met uh, earlier, Cheyenne and Crystal, thank you uh, very, very much. And Carlos, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, let me uh, first um, welcome everyone to the city of Philadelphia, a city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. We uh, greatly appreciate uh, having you here. Uh, and for bringing uh, Big Picture Learning uh, to uh, this conference, uh, Principals Conference, uh, to, uh, to Philadelphia. Uh, I know another person will be speaking, Michael Robbins, uh, of course, from the uh, U.S. Department of Education, Senior Advisor on Nonprofits, and certainly uh, Dennis and Elliot. Let's give them a big, big round of applause as well. I, um, I'm also here uh, in a kind of a dual capacity. I'm really a, uh, even though I'm listed on the program, I uh, would technically consider myself to be a plus one uh, tonight. Uh, the real uh, star of our operation is a uh, co-founding uh, board member of uh, Big Picture Philadelphia and also on the board of El Centro, uh, which is uh, my wife, Lisa. Uh, who is the, uh, is also the president of Philadelphia Academies. Uh, and so uh, any good idea that I've had about education, uh, you can attribute to her. Uh, the stuff that doesn't work uh, is usually my work. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's really the way that goes. Um, I, I, um, uh, my comments tonight are really uh, one to congratulate uh, Big Picture Learning uh, from a national perspective, but you know everything really does happen at uh, the local level. And so, uh, if you're able to get over, obviously, to uh, to Med East, uh, do that. If you're able to get to El Centro, uh, please do that as well. We have young people who are doing great things in this city, uh, and uh, this idea uh, that uh, education, of all things, uh, could be one size fits all, uh, could not be more wrong. Uh, it really is about the individual student. They are individuals and people learn individually. Uh, and so I really want to uh, commend uh, the effort and the idea. 26 states uh, across the United States of America, 92%, 21 states, uh, 26,000 students, 92% uh, graduation rate. Um, I'd be excited to put that up against anything else that's going on uh, in uh, the United States of America. And so one, certainly want to encourage uh, if there are, I know this is mostly principals, but there could be uh, a funder or two uh, in the room, you should support uh, this uh, organization. You don't get it if you don't ask. So, um, you know, by whatever title, uh, and there were big fights uh, about a year or so ago about alternative schools uh, in Philadelphia. I think tons of people actually didn't even know what an alternative school was. They'd never heard the term, they didn't understand it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, if we're not going to make uh, school uh, fun, I'm not sure whose responsibility that is. Uh, but if it's not going to be fun, it should at least be interesting. Uh, and uh, we should capture the attention of young people in a variety of ways who, again, learn in different ways, at different pace, uh, uh, different paces, uh, and under different uh, learning uh, conditions. Our responsibility as adults, uh, depending on what our jobs are, for me at least, is to make sure that they are properly funded. So we were having a conversation about uh, funding uh, at the table. And while I would suggest that uh, money is not uh, the uh, answer to every problem, 
uh, often it beats whatever is in second place. Uh, you cannot get a high quality education uh, on the cheap. Uh, if you want smaller class size, if you want uh, alternative programs, if you want a nurse in every school, if you want counselors, if you want and want and want and want, you have to pay for it. But think about the return on investment. If you want to take a business perspective, uh, any dollar that we invest in young people in this city, across the river, in this state, in the United States of America, uh, you're going to get an incredible return uh, on improving the life of a young person. That's someone who can take care of themselves, sustain themselves, get a job, pay taxes. Uh, I love that. Um, and, um, uh, and actually be a net uh, producer, uh, not someone who's actually costing us money. Education, public education especially, should be a part of the national defense of the United States of America. That's what's going to make us strong. That's what's going to keep us strong uh, and have us leading the way all around the world. And I love the military, and they do uh, fantastic things, but I don't see them having bake sales. As a matter of fact, the deal that was just announced yesterday, a big part of the federal budget deal announced yesterday was because of concerns about cuts to the military. I don't think we should cut our military budget necessarily either. There are people who do not like us. I'd just like to hear someone make the same argument and the same advocacy and the same passion about funding education all across the United States of America as we do a bunch of other things. That's what I want. So, um, so stay strong. Uh, there are folks out here who are passionate about uh, these issues. I'm trying to do my part. Uh, here in the city uh, and uh, plan to spend uh, the rest of my time, uh, in office at least, uh, focused on the issue of properly funding education across the 500 school districts uh, in uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And to do that, you actually need a funding formula. You'd also need it to be based on the students that you're serving and the challenges that they face. And Pennsylvania is one of only three states in the United States of America that does not use student population and student attendance as a base uh, of how we distribute uh, education funding. We need to change that. So I know this is a national audience, but we have some issues right here uh, in uh, the city and in the Commonwealth. And certainly uh, your advocacy about these issues uh, in your own locales uh, will only help us uh, here in Philadelphia and in uh, Pennsylvania. So as you probably kind of figured out by now, I'm pretty passionate about education. That's how you reduce poverty. That's how you reduce unemployment. That's how you drive down the crime rate. Because people who are educated, folks who are working, people who can take care of themselves, don't have time for all that nonsense uh, out in the street. Now, young people stay focused and stay in the right direction. And that happens when adults do what they're supposed to do. And this is a room full of adults doing what they're supposed to do. So to the principals, God bless you. That is a tough, tough job. Uh, there's no way in the world that I could ever be a principal. Running the city of Philadelphia is much simpler uh, than trying to run a school. I can assure you uh, of that. Uh, but I admire what you do. I care passionately about what you do. And uh, I'm excited uh, that uh, you, know, you could have pretty much had your conference almost anywhere you wanted. You chose Philadelphia. We're excited about that. Sorry about the weather. I actually have nothing to do with that. Uh, but there are some people, I'm sure, who are upset with me about it. Um, <laughs> have a great, great time uh, in the city. Um, and I would strongly suggest, since I've seen your agenda, and I'll close with this, uh, that uh, you should probably take your desserts upstairs to your room uh, and immediately go to sleep. And whoever came up with the idea that anyone would have a meeting at 6.30 in the morning, you need to have some conversation with them about meeting planning. So God bless you. God keep you. Have a good, good time. And, uh, you know, if you get a moment, venture outside and see what Philadelphia has to offer. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mary Nutter, so much. And as if uh, introducing the mayor isn't enough, I also um, uh, was asked uh, when they said this retreat was coming to Philadelphia, I was like, who, who do we want to honor? Who's really helped uh, move this work um, in this city? And um, it's a pretty quick answer to that. Um, and uh, we decided to uh, honor these two individuals uh, in a way that hopefully it reflects what we are all about. And so we started by uh, asking the students, 
How would you like to celebrate these two individuals? So uh, Andrew Chrisman, who's our advisor and art teacher at, at El Centro, uh, gathered a bunch of students at the school who, are, who demonstrate a passion and interest in art and um, gathered them together and said, so how would you celebrate these two individuals? And I think there were about 11 of you, right, originally. There were about 11 of you who kind of sat for a period of time with Andrew and kind of hashed it out and got paper out and started describing all these words. It was like this little mini charrette. And then we decided, okay, we're going to do what we do next, and that is we're going to find people in the community to help us actually make this more real. And so uh, we we're fortunate enough to have two partners who are here tonight. Uh, Dan Schimmel started Steamworks Philadelphia, and Evan Malone has started uh, NextFab Studios are here. And with their help, creative help, and their facilities, we uh, th brought the students into uh, NextFab and we, we created what we thought were kind of original awards that reflect what we're celebrating about these two individuals. So, at this point, I'm gonna shut up because it's much more interesting. I'm gonna ask two students to come up and exhibit these awards. So, Crystal Cruz and Cheyenne Midluski, come on up. <laughs> students, I want to uh, present this to Mayor Nutter. You've inspired us to present to you this award because you gave El Centro a second chance. Your endless energy and dedication to education has helped the school district in these hard times. For example, you have worked with every, you have worked with city council to make sure they did not shut down alternative schools, which helped ad address the horrible dropout rate in the city. You pushed for El Centro to stay open when it wasn't popular to fight for alternative schools. When we were protesting in front of City Hall to save El Centro, you met us outside and led the charge into city council chambers. This action is represented by the design of this award. So for this, we thank you and... <laughs> oh. Um, we just want to say um, thank you for believing us and giving us a second chance. to celebrate your never-ending inspiring leadership, but you're also the director of Philadelphia Academies. You're also a founding board member of Big Picture Philadelphia, which means without you, we wouldn't be here today. We also thank you for your strong voice for education across the city. Lastly, we appreciate the ways that you support our center of mission to build strong relationships in our community through project work in the real world. For this, we want to give you thanks and appreciation for your inspiring leadership and support, which inspired the design for our award. 